Welcome back to Word Magic. Today it's all about the wild hunt, so pull up a chair. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and do so now. Hit that ringer bell so you get notifications when I have a new video out. And we will get started here in a moment. A little bit of an introduction here for those who don't know who I am. I am Yasmin Gallinorn. I am a New York Times, USA Today, and Publishers Weekly bestselling author, and I have over 65 books out. I write urban fantasy, paranormal romance, paranormal mystery, and a little bit of horror here and there. Um, I have 23 years experience in the business. 20 years with trad publishers, mostly New York publishers, and three in indie, and I'm entering my fourth year of indie um, writing now, indie publishing, and I am loving it. So that gives you a, a quick idea of who I am, and we'll get started with the topic at hand, which is May is Wild Hunt Month. Silver Mist comes out May 14th. We will be having a release party in my Facebook group, and the link will be below. Um, it is available for pre-order now, as is Book 7, Witching Hour, and those links will be below too. I really want to celebrate The Silver Mist coming out because it's sort of... I can't quite tell you a few things that have gone on lately. Excuse me. But... Let's put it this way. A couple things have happened lately that have really pushed me into being absolutely thrilled with the fact that I'm in indie publishing. And it feels like I've crossed a threshold now. And with book six coming out, it's, it's like a milestone for me. Also, once the last other world book came out, it sort of cut my ties with my ex-publisher, um, they didn't have anything to do with that, but it's still linked to series that they, they have, you know, and it's like that marked a threshold for me, a stepping beyond working with something that they still have. Um, so yeah, it, it was like a threshold, it was like a crossroad. And so I am celebrating, I am celebrating the wild hunt, I am celebrating the entry of my fourth year into indie. I'm celebrating because I'm happy and I like my readers to join in with me. So this month for May, actually, we're going to be celebrating in my Facebook group with all sorts of contests, including a cosplay contest. So start looking at your closet and figuring out which character in the Wild Hunt series, and that's the only one that's eligible, Wild Hunt series that you can dress up like. And I don't care if you don't look like the character in terms of body. I don't care if you're a guy who wants to cosplay Ember. I don't care if you're a woman who wants to cosplay Hearn. It doesn't matter. The point is to get the attitude and the sort of look of the character right. Look as in clothes. Look as in the energy that comes off those characters. So be prepared and that contest will start next week at some point so uh, start looking now and I'm going to show you a picture here of my husband who dressed up and he was he's such a good sport I love him so much. Um, he dressed up as Kernanos so I could take a picture of him and here it is. <laughs> That great and he really embodies the energy of Kernanos. Um, we're going to have all sorts of contests all through the month and a lot of fun posts so I encourage you to join us and and just celebrate you know celebrate May celebrate Beltane which the Wild Hunt is really connected with Beltane in both mythology and in my personal magical path and 
So, you know, let's party. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about why I love writing this series. And it goes into that magical energy. For me, this series connects with my personal magical path more than any series I've ever written. It, it's like I can pour my magic into the books. It's, it's a place where it feels like magic and reality. Well, I'm not going to say reality. Magic and this world actually connect. And granted, yes, the magic is exacerbated. And, um, I created a number of creatures and things for the books, but there's a lot of grounding in magical tradition, and there's a lot of grounding in mythology and the grounding in the gods that I work with. And I think that's why it feels so real, is because for me it is very real on one level. In fact, there have only been three series that I've written that I've ever dreamt about. I dreamt about Indigo Court. I dreamt about Whisper Hollow. And I've dreamt about The Wild Hunt. Those are the only three series that I've had recurring dreams about. And the where the characters have come and talked to me in the dreams. So this is a series of my heart. You know, this is one of the three series that I feel really connected to me in in my core. And of course now I'm writing a book from Raven's point of view. Raven is one of the anti-fae and I believe I coined that phrase. Um, it's capital A N T E hyphen capital F A E. Now in the world of the Wild Hunt, the anti-fae are the predecessors of the fae race. They're the they're the race that the light and dark courts came from. Um, and they are all unique. Every single one of the anti-fae are different. Even the daughters of the anti-fae and the sons of the anti-fae, they may have some of their parents' um, attributes, but they're going to be different. They're unique. Every one of them is unique. And so Raven, um, when she came through, I did not expect her to be such an incredibly vivid character. But she just was. She was there. And then she started coming into my dreams. And I knew I had to write about her as well. And while I'm keeping her books in the same series as the Wild Hunt, they are Wild Hunt books, but they are anti-fae adventures. They can be read separately, in a sense, on their own. Um, and they have a very different feel. As I'm writing through the, um, as I'm writing through Witching Hour, I'm seeing the different slant that the anti-fey adventures will be taking on the Wild Hunt world. And I'm also realizing how much I connect to Raven. Now, I love Ember, and I do connect to her, and I have dreamt of her. But I connect to Raven on a gut level, on a core level, and I'm like, oh, this is the most I've ever connected to any character at all. Um, far more than Camille, far more than... Karis. Um, it, it's like Raven has come to life inside. And Ember did too. Ember has too, but there is there are more differences between me and Ember than there are between me and Raven. Although Raven has a side of her that I could see in myself, but I don't let out. <laughs> but I love I love finding those core connections with the characters and with the worlds that I write because that to me makes them more vivid. For example, when I wrote the bed and bed or the bath and body shop mysteries, now I can't even remember what I've called the series, 
um, the three Persia mysteries. I didn't connect with that world at all. And while I liked Persia, I didn't fully connect with her. Um, I felt like I was writing from the outside rather from the inside. I loved the Chintz and China series, but I didn't connect with uh, Emerald that much. Because again, I, I wasn't a mom and while I did connect with her having to deal with this just day-to-day, -day, you know, vagaries that make your day one of those what-the-fuck moments. Um, I didn't fully connect with, with her. So then we came to Sicily and I connected with the series. Not so much with Sicily, but with the series. I connected with the Indica Court world on a deep gut level. Um, Whisper Hollow, yes, I connected to Karis, but not as much as to Raven or, you know, a couple of the other characters. But I connect to the Whisper Hollow world again. That entire world is very vivid inside me. And that's what has happened with the Wild Hunt. Not only is the world very real to me and very present in my thoughts, but the characters, all of them, are actually quite present in my thoughts. I connect to Hearn because I work with actually the, the god Hearn and Karananos. And so I've drawn on that energy for the characters. Um, I even connect with Victor and Talia and Yutani. So all of these characters in this series have become very real to me in a sense in terms of I understand them and they present themselves to me so that I can I can find the core of what they need to say. And of course as I said Raven has just like hit in a big way and in fact while I was finishing up Blood Bonds, I had dreams with Ember and Raven standing beside me, yelling at me to get the hell done with that so they, I could get back to their world. I mean, they were yelling at me. Um, they were irritated. They were like, we want you to be writing about us. And I was just like, I, yeah, I'm getting done, I'm getting done, I'm getting done. So... <laughs> It's, it's kind of odd, but, you know, sometimes characters will do that for some of us writers. Um, so, yes, uh, I'm passionate about writing this series. And it's so invigorating to be so excited about something you're writing. Um, I wish I could say that for every book I've written. I can't, you know, there are, I have favorites. I have favorite series. I have favorite characters. I've always tried to do my best with every book, but but there are ones that just speak to me so much more than others, and The Wild Hunt speaks to me. <coughs> Excuse me. So, as we go along, I've been asked a few questions, or, you know, people have made comments about how they love getting more books faster. And that is one of the wonderful things about me being able to write indie. Um, I can give you books faster because when I was with my ex-publisher, I was not allowed to write more than three books a year for them. They were even pushing me about that. They were not that thrilled about me wanting to write three books a year. And I was locked in by do not compete clauses to where I couldn't go to another publisher at that point um, unless I did it underhandedly and I don't do things underhandedly and so I was effectively pretty much stifled from writing more than three books a year I am prolific I am gifted with being prolific it is a talent I have that I am very grateful for and I write tight after this many books I've taken to heart all my revision notes over the years 
and I write so much tighter than I did when I started out. And part of it is just freaking practice, you know, practice, 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 writing book after book after book, and paying attention each time to what the editor would say about, you need to do this, you need to do that. You know, I still have my wind points. I'm the comma queen. I either put in far too many commas or far too few. And luckily my editor is good and she catches me on all of them. And I will always, always have problems knowing when the word a while is a while or a while. You know, so she catches me on those too. And minor things like that. But... Yeah, over the years I've learned to write very tight, so I don't have to do draft or after draft anymore. So I can write more books, and yes, I am writing them a bit shorter. Not a whole lot, but a bit, because I am focusing on the main plots and a couple minor subplots per book. Um, I find I actually enjoy doing that. It's a relief, in a sense, because it feels like I'm writing... I know this sounds odd, but it feels like I'm writing a TV show rather than a movie. You're getting a lot more episodes rather than one movie a year or two movies a year. You're getting episodes every couple months, and that allows me more freedom to play with the world, um, which means I am keeping the books a little shorter, and I am able to take them in different directions now. and project out to where I want to go with this or where I want to go with that. And as long as my readers like them and continue, you know, to knock wood, buy them, and I'm very grateful that you are, I can keep a series going for a while. And I don't have to, you know, sit there and go, oh, I can't write any more in this because they killed it. Um, so that's something that I love, and I've got the freedom to write what I want. And again, I'm loving writing what I'm what I'm writing right now. I'm loving writing the Wild Hunt. Some of you've also mentioned that you've noticed I'm putting less graphic sex in the books, and that's true. I have no problem with erotica. I have no problem writing sex scenes. Um, but honestly. I had to write a certain amount of sex in the books with my ex-publisher, and when I tried to cut back, they pushed me to add more. And by that I mean it wouldn't be, you need to write more, you have to write more, it'd be, we strongly like it if you'd write another sex scene. Um, so I'm finding I prefer, I may not close the door, but I'm preferring writing less graphic scenes just because I prefer to focus on mood and I there are only so many ways to come up with the way people have sex um, but yeah I am writing I am writing less sex but I'm trying to write a little bit more romantic scenes when it's called for um, now I'm going to also give you a hint about something. Well, it's not really a hint. Keep a watch over the second part of this year towards the latter part because I've got a big surprise coming up. And no, it has nothing to do with Otherworld, but I do have a big surprise coming up and uh, I think you'll love it. Um, before I go today, I'm going to talk a little bit about a sale I have going. If you have not read The Wild Hunt yet, and you've stuck through me with me through this video, I have put the first three books on sale, and they are for 99 cents each, so now is a good time to buy them. Um, those books won't go on free. Um, at least not for a long, long time. So if you want the first three books and you haven't got them yet, 99 cents each. Links are below. And also, I wanted to tell you, and this is a limited time sale, by the way, guys. And I wanted to tell you about the 
books you can get for free from me now, um, because you may not have realized that. If you have not read the Bewitching Bedlam series, you can get the first book free, Bewitching Bedlam, in e-format, by the way, guys. I'm not talking print for any of these. Um, you can buy the print, but I'm not, I can't give it away free. So, yeah, you can get Bewitching Bedlam free. Um, you can get Night Mist, the first book in the Indigo Court series, free. You can now get Fury Rising, the first book in the Fury Unbound series, free. And you can get Ghost of a Chance, the first book in the Chintz and China series, free. So those four books, if you haven't read those series and you are curious about reading them, you can get them for free and give them a try and see if you want to read the rest. And we will have all the links below for you. Uh, needless to say, the link section is going to be pretty, pretty stuffed down here. Um, another, uh, another thing I might mention that I don't think I mentioned earlier is that in my newsletter starting in May, which is coming up in about a week, I will be serializing a new unpublished novella uh, for Maddie for Bewitching Bedlam, and I will be putting, section sectioning it out like I did with the short story The Wish Factor into my newsletters only, and once I am done with it, then I will put it on sale. Um, but you can get it in um, my newsletter, so sign up if you want to read it, and be sure to open that, and also when you sign up for my newsletter, be sure to open the confirmation email and click on the link inside. <clears throat> Don't send me the confirmation email. Click the link that it gives you in there because that is the only way that you will be firmly signed up for the newsletter. I can't do it for you and I can't send you emails if you haven't confirmed that you want the subscription. And you might also put nightqueen at galanorn.com in your safe senders list that is the email through which my newsletter goes to goes out. It is not a contact email for me, even though I, I do get the emails that you send back on it, but it is not a contact email. Um, it is solely for my newsletter. So, yeah, um, Demon's Delight will start in about a week, and you will get to see what Maddie's up to right now, you know. So, I think that is about it. Um, next week I will be talking about the journey from going hybrid to indie in Word Magic and uh, we'll be focusing on what it was like, things to be aware of. This may be a multi-part video by the way because there's so much and I cannot teach you everything. You're gonna have to do legwork yourself but I can give you a hint of what it's like and what the differences are between going trad and going indie. And obviously, as I said, I'm happier now um, than I was in trad, but there were good times in trad and it did a lot for me. It's just not the same now and it's harder, harder, I think, to get into trad now than it was. And Honestly, unless you hit it big in trad, there's not, unless you just really want it, there's not as much reason to go trad as there used to be. I mean, it used to be the only way you could do it. Um, when I started out, it was the only way you could get in, and now it's not. And so, um, yeah, I'll be talking about that next time. So I hope you have a wonderful week, and if you have questions, leave them in the comments, and some I can answer now, and some Jen will answer, and some she will take for me to answer in other videos or on my blog. Um, so I will talk to you later, and take care, and have a wonderful, wonderful week, and a lovely Beltane, or May Day if you don't celebrate Beltane. And, um, yeah, I guess that's it.